Welcome to the micro communication course. Today we start the new topic that is about a multi cavity cliston. So now we a multi cavity cliston. If you see here, there it has a multiple cavities. So if you see earlier, that is a two cavity cliston. So it has mainly a two cavities. One is about the input cavity, and another is about the output cavity. That input cavity is called as a puncture cavity, and output cavity is to be called as a a catcher cavity but in a multi cavity cliston along with that input and the output cavity multiple cavities can be added okay in this particular interaction region and that cliston is to be called as a multi cavity cliston now there are the multiple cavities now this one cavity cavity 1 cavity 2 these are called as the intermediate cavities now the explanation for the multi cavity cliston is same so now this velocity modulation, then uh, we can say that a current modulation. Okay, so it is similar there. Only that, what is the change? It has a multiple cavities are there. It has a intermediate cavities, and that cavities are more than two. It is to be considered. So there will be three cavities, four cavities, five cavities, six cavities. These are the intermediate cavities. That is in a, a multi-cavity crystal. Now, here the cathode, it emits the electron, these are the focusing anode, it will focus the electron there, these are the focusing magnet, that box are there, these are nothing but a focusing magnet, and that electrons are propagating through this input cavity, that is puncture cavity. This one we can say that is RF input here, through this RF input. The role of a cliston is what? A amplification. Okay, so we can say that we are providing the RF input to the input cavity that is the puncture cavity based on the input your velocity modulation takes place and the electron field forms the bunches and the bunches are propagating toward the a collector there here we have we can say that is about a collector or a, a that is collector the collector anode okay so it will collect it here okay so now electrons are propagating here the bunches formation takes place then that will be propagating through the intermediate cavities Okay, then they will give up their energy. Okay, so then, then we have the uh, another cavity, another intermediate cavity. Then it will reach to the catcher cavity. Then the catcher cavity, when it reaches to the catcher cavity, the electron bunches will give up their energy to this cavity so that your RF output will be amplified. And then finally, the electron, whatever the bunches are there, when they release their energy to the cavity, they, their speed is reduced and then they are moving slowly or they are passing through this particular cavity, catcher cavity slowly toward the collector. Now th the principle is same, electron pass through these cavities there, they form the bunches at the input cavity, then that bunches are passing through the intermediate cavities and then reaches at the catcher cavities, then they give up the energy to the catcher cavity and then they release their energy to the catcher cavity, then that electron will move slowly toward the catcher cavity. Now, uh, what is the use of this particular multi-cavity crystal? Generally, if we require a large gain, okay, large gain or you can say that a large power gain, so in that case, a multi-cavity crystal to be used there. Now then, a distance between the cavities. So earlier we say that from the two any two cavity crystal, so distance between that input cavity, puncture cavity to the catcher cavity, that is about the L. And using that, we calculate that what will be the optimum distance. Optimum distance is what? That is about a minimum distance where we can place the cavity. Okay, when we can place the cavity. Or we will get that formation of a bunch. And that optimum distance is depending upon that what will be the velocity of the electron that velocity is depending upon that a dc beam voltage that is v0 what will be the v0 there and what will be the bunching parameter okay so based on that we can calculate that what will be the optimum distance so optimum length generally if you see that we can write the optimum length here so it is depending upon the 3.6 by omega 
that is the body velocity then a beam voltage then what will be the bunching parameter and what will be the input signal there okay that is about a optimum length so now this length optimum length so where these cavities to be placed which are the intermediate cavities that are to be placed at the optimum length so means distance between the input cavity and this intermediate cavity it is depending upon that optimum length and that optimum length okay so that will be gradually decreases when we move toward the another intermediate cavity now here so from the input cavity to the intermediate cavity one this is the intermediate cavity now so distance between this will be supposed to i am saying suppose in terms of a number supposed to be 10 now so then then uh, from the uh, first intermediate cavity and another intermediate cavity the distance between that in terms of a number it will be 9 means it is the less means gradually the distance between the cavities okay will be gradually decreases here so that we will get that a higher power gain so here we say that because of that intermediate cavity signal strength will be increased here okay and and the, when we gradually moving from this puncher cavity toward the catcher cavity there that is the output cavity so that optimum length will be decreases toward this drip space now this one is about a drip space or a we can say that a distance between the two cavities now so this distance between the two cavity it is gradually decreases suppose in terms of a number here it is distance between the one cavity and this cavity is 10 then this cavity is 9 then this cavity to this cavity that is about 8 likewise so it will be decreases now gradually that cavity distance will be decreases then uh, we supposed to be consider that for a given particular cavity, we are this multiple multi cavity cluster. We are supposed to get the high output gain or a high power gain. Then we need to tune the cavity in such a way that so we will get that a higher power gain. Okay, that tuning is to be done based on that what will be the optimum length of the cavity. Okay, so then we supposed to be consider that another parameter that is about a bandwidth so generally we say that a limitation of a conventional tube at a higher frequency gain bandwidth product is constant okay so now in that case the gain bandwidth product even if we supposed to be increase the gain so then there will be a narrow bandwidth but here in the case of a multi cavity so on we supposed to be consider that a gain as well as the bandwidth is to be improved so as we have seen that earlier in a two cavity system so we are getting a wider bandwidth as well as the higher gain but in the case of a multi cavity system our aim is about to get the higher gain but what about the bandwidth so for that purpose we need to tune the cavity in such a way that we will get the higher gain as well as the bandwidth so now how to tune the cavity there are the two types of a tuning one we can say that a synchronous tuning and another is called as a, a staggered tuning in case of a, in case of a synchronous tuning so you can say that all cavities are tuned to a one single frequency now these are the multiple cavities okay so now this one is about a multiple cavities we can say that so all the cavities to be tuned at a single frequency now for each and every cavity is their capacitance and inductance is varies it is depending upon their size and shape so that's why we need to tune those cavities at some particular single frequency then by by adopting this particular technique for tuning the cavity at a single frequency we will get the largest power gain okay by using this technique by using the tuning the multiple cavities at a single frequency we will achieve the large power gain but again there are the limitations regarding the bandwidth we achieve the large power gain because we are tuning the cap uh, tuning this cavity at a single frequency but there are the limitations regarding the uh, bandwidth so what about the bandwidth here so in that case 
when we consider this cavities these are the input cavities output cavities along with that we have some intermediate cavities there so means cavities are you sorry your multi cavity cluster operating based on the input cavity and the output cavity but along with that we have a intermediate cavity so in that case if your cluster are operated using this particular intermediate cavity and if that intermediate cavities are tuned based on that whatever the operation of a frequency there okay for a given particular uh, cavity there so in that case what happened because of this because of this particular intermediate cavity then what will happen if it is not tuned at particular frequency or that particular band of frequency there so in that case so we will we will achieve that the gain of this particular multi cavity cluster will be reduced here. but in the at the same time we can say that gain reduces but what happened that uh, what we can say that output power is increases here. okay but output power increases as at an extent of what 10 to 15 percent okay not more than that but then if we consider that a staggered tuning so in that case a staggered tuning so whatever the intermediate intermediate cavities are there that cavities are tuned to the off center frequency so whichever we say that at operating frequency. so it is to be set at off center frequency so if we set the intermediate cavities at the off center frequency then we will achieve the larger bandwidth there. okay now here we achieve the larger bandwidth but what about the gain there? then in the case of a multi cavity cluster either we achieve the gain using the single operating frequency or we can achieve the bandwidth using this off center frequency that tuning to be done at the off center frequency with intermediate cavities to be tuned at the off center frequency so in a practice in a in general case so most of the cases we say supposed to be require a larger bandwidth there so that's why a staggered tuning multi cavity clusters are used because of their higher bandwidth and then the role of the multi cavity clusters we will get the bandwidth here and because of that multiple cavities again as compared to the two cavity clusters we will achieve the larger gain okay but here we supposed to be tuned that the cavities as well as we supposed to be consider the a bandwidth here. so now what are the typical values of this optical that uh, power gain bandwidth and frequencies there so we consider here for a multiple multi cavity restaurant so we achieve the power gain that is 40 to 50 dB and the frequency here that will be operating frequency for this uh, multi cavity crystal that is about 0.5 gigahertz to 40 gigahertz there then a power here output power we supposed to consider that power range we say that will be for 25 kilowatt to 40 megawatt that is about a, a power okay so now these are about the number or numerical values or we can say that whatever the parameters we supposed to be consider that gain and a frequency along with that what will be the power in your multi cavity cluster is to be used here so now that's all about your multi cavity cluster. So now next we see that is about a, a reflex cluster. Okay. So now in a multi cavity, you just see that in a multi cavity cluster, there are the multiple cavities present. Okay. In a two cavity cluster, there are the two cavities are there. And this two cavities cluster, as well as the multi cavity cluster, is used at a higher gain. Okay. And uh, generally we say that. A two cavity cluster or multi cavity cluster is used as a amplifier. But now, next cluster that is called as a reflex cluster, 
that is useful for the oscillation purpose so that is used as a oscillator okay not as we can could not say oscillation purpose. that just like we say that the applications of the reflex histone is nothing but a used as a oscillator there so now oscillator where that oscillators are used wherever we have the microwave receiver at a microwave receiver we supposed to be use a reflex histone as a, a local oscillator there or wherever we require a power generation micro signal generations so in the case of a micro power generation micro signal generation we will use a reflex histone as a micro signal generation means it will be used as a generator when we consider supposed to be a, in a reflex histone in a transmitter we supposed to be use a reflex histone as a oscillator local oscillator when we are using at a receiver micro receiver there or we can use this reflex histone as a pump oscillator in a parametric amplifier or as well as this can be used as a oscillator very very in a various modulator circuit at a micro frequency generally this reflex histone is a low power is a low power low efficiency that we can say that the micro oscillator okay this one you can say that low power low efficiency micro oscillator there and that output power ranges from 10 milliwatt to 3 watt here that is about the output power let's say that output power p out here and the frequency range or we can say that a operating frequency is here from 4 to 200 gigahertz this one is about a reflex system. now how that reflex system constructed generally in a reflex histone so we require in a reflex histone only a one one cavity instead of a multiple cavities or a two cavities we re, we supposed to be consider only a single cavity in a reflex histone single cavity reflex histone and the principle of achieving that a bunch of formation everything is based on that a uh, two cavity okay so now we can say that it has a cathode now so cathode then uh, this cathode emit the electron there okay so now this is about a cathode emitter we supposed to say here then we have a anode here okay this one the body anode here then we say that there is a cavity this cavity is called as a reentrant cavity now i just supposed to draw a dot dot line okay so this cavity is called as a reentrant cavity same that we have used in a two cavity histone and then at the end we have a repeller okay so now we have we can say that we have a repeller now consider that here that electron emit from this cathode here these are the electrons okay that is about a beam passing through the cavity there when it reaches to the repeller okay now cathode it is about a negative one okay so we can say that we going, we are providing the supply that is a negative one. again a repeller we supposed to provide a higher negative voltage to the repeller so that is about a repeller voltage is a negative here 
and for this replace list one we supposed to take a output from this okay we supposed to take a output from this so how we can take output so we supposed to be insert one probe here so this one will get that a rf output okay so this one is a rf output now if uh, people are not able to see i'll write here in a black pin now so here we can see that a rf output okay so this one that is the body of rf output that is the body of probe is inserted inside this a repeller and then this one that spacing between the cavity that is the what you can say earlier the same that the body d here and from this to the repeller okay, this one is nothing but a l here okay that is the body length from this to whatever the repeller we have and this one is the body d here that is the, this one that is spacing that is cavity spacing that is the body d here now electron emit from the cathode okay this one electron emit from the cathode then it will reach to the repeller here we have the repeller here so then what happened that due to the build okay due to the signal frequency here we can say that for that is the body signal here we suppose to consider because of this build that cavity has some particular signal here and because of that electrons are accelerated and decelerated we say and then accelerated electrons will move faster toward the repeller decelerated electrons will move slower toward the repeller and then repeller repel the electron back to the cavity okay so now electron repel back to the, the cavity and then once that electron repel back to the cavity oscillation takes place and we'll get that a oscillated output at a micro frequency now this here in this re reflex system only single cavity is used to generate the microwave oscillation okay so to here you can see that a single cavity electrons are moving from the single cavity so here because of this some but for this for a cavity here okay for this particular cavity across this some a grid voltage is there and because of that the grid voltage here so that will be propagate that electrons are propagating through this particular cavity they are accelerating or decelerating there those electrons are accelerating that will move faster toward the repeller those electron are decelerated means what slow slow down their speed okay that speed of the electron when it passing through this cavity they will be move with a velocity that move, velocity will be increase or a decrease acceleration means what their velocity increases deceleration means what velocity decreases okay now there about the accelerating electron or a decelerating now those electrons are moving toward here they are reducing their speed okay so now the electron who has a higher velocity they will reach near they will reach toward this repeller here or near to the repeller and the electron those we have the lower speed they will not reach toward this repeller now this both the electron will reach at the cavity and they form the bunches at this particular cavity okay the bunches formation takes place at the cavity itself the electrons are moving through this cavity electron will reach to the cavity back okay okay this one is about electrons moving back and they form the bunches at this particular place now that formation of the bunches these are depending upon that a tuning the cavity tuning the cavity is we can tune the cavity using the screw or various method for the tuning there or another way is about what we can increase the repeller voltage okay so that electrons will be repelled back or we can have a scope here we can say that a higher beam voltage be supposed to be considered so that electron will be move faster okay velocity of the electrons will be move faster now how that electrons are accelerated 
okay because if you see that a voltage across the cavity grid so this one is about we can say that this one is about a cavity so there will be voltage act present across this particular cavity there so how much is the voltage okay based on this particular voltage your electrons will be move far faster or electrons will be slower uh, suppose here i suppose to say that we have the okay we supposed to be consider that we have the voltage across the grid now draw okay i just draw a slower okay, smaller one okay so i need a more space for this draw again here i need a three or four cycles there so that's why i need to draw retro again this one is one cycle cycle now is it okay okay now now consider that here we have this one is about a grid voltage okay that that is about a across this particular cavity there this is about a, a grid voltage across the cavity now the bunches formation takes place at a specific cycle okay at a specific cycle and electron will release their energy okay the whatever the bunches are there that bunches formation takes place at some specified time or at some a specific specific cycle of this voltage grid okay grid voltage so now here what happen here so electrons will move faster or slower that are depending upon that what voltage or what will the velocity of the electron So here in this case, okay. Now in this case here, I'm just going to use the paint. So now, at this particular point, the electrons are started moving. They will reach. They will form the bunch. Okay. sorry okay likewise so now here what happened that bunches formation takes place but electron will release their energy at a positive half cycle of that voltage grid okay grid voltage now here what happened this is about what we can say that a accelerated electron this one is called as a accelerated electron that are the accelerated now this one so electrons are moving okay passing through this gap okay this cavity there it will reach to the repeller then it will be repelled back so those electrons are passing okay at a positive grid voltage so they will have the higher velocity they will reach more toward the repeller now this has a positive half cycle so they have the higher velocity okay and they will reach more deeper to the ripple now supposed to be here a ripple now so those electrons having those electrons are passing at a lower velocity okay this one is we can say i supposed to be consider only half cycle now not more than that okay so those will electrons are passing at the lower that we can say that indicative half cycle of the grid voltage they will slow their velocity means deceleration of the electron acceleration of the electron okay so now so that they will form the bunches and they will release the energy at a cavity when there will be a grid voltage will be a positive now at a positive half cycle they will release the energy now this one is about a first case another case is again we can say that this will, at this particular process here happen okay that bunch formation we can say that and that bunch formation takes place that is called as a first mode and this first mode is occur at the 3 by 4 cycle first mode occur this one is about you can say that a first mode of this a reflex system 
then a second mode in a second mode means what the same here electron will move faster likewise okay now this one and this one is called as a another cycle that is about a 1 3 by 4 cycle another case another cycle we can supposed to be consider that Move here, sorry. Move here. And this one is about we can say that a two of three by four. Okay, so now this one is about a two of three by four cycle. So this one three by four cycle. So similarly, we have. Another one, three of three by four cycle, four of three by four cycle. So likewise, the cycles are repeating. So generally, in a replaced electron, we will get the at least minimum three or a four more, not more than that. So that modes are depending upon. So what will be the repeller voltage here? That is, like here we suppose to consider that. A repeller voltage is supposed to be applied, and that, based on this particular repeller voltage, we will get the various modes. Here. If the repeller voltage is set at particular correct value, then and then, then and then, what happens? That electron will provide their energy to the positive half cycle of the grid voltage. If the repeller voltage is not set properly, then electron will not Form the bunches and they will not give up their energy at the positive half cycle. Okay, if they are not give up the energy to the positive half cycle, then what happens? That cavity get heated. Okay, so now we need to adjust the repeller voltage in such a way that they will provide at some particular cycle, three by four cycle or one of three by four cycle or two of three by four cycle, and so that will get the Output here that oscillation takes place. Means your cavity will oscillate. Your will that reflex electron will act as the oscillator. We need to adjust a repeller in such a way that at a positive half cycle, positive half cycle of this grid voltage, they will provide their energy to the cavity. Now that electron form the bunches, they will give up their energy to the cavity. So in a cavity, there is a oscillation. Okay, so. We can say that it's a sustained oscillation. Okay, so gravity will get the oscillated output. Now, once that electrons release their their energy to the cavity, okay, that energy release. Now, then electrons will be attracted at the cavity or somewhere at nearby. There will be a plate so that electrons will be attracted. Once their energy release, they will be attracted at attracted at the cavity metallic portion or there will be some metallic plate. Nearby this reflex electron, and they will be absorbed at that particular metallic plate. Okay, so now th this one that is about we say here, a repeller voltage which to be adjusted in such a way that will get the a maximum output or will get the particular cycle of the voltage. So at a particular polarity suppose to generally we say that acceleration or a deceleration of the electron takes place that acceleration means higher velocity deceleration means what a lower velocity of the electron there and we are getting that a that particular reflex electron a various mode and reflex electron generally we say it is to be operating at a different mode and for each a cycle That is nothing but that cycle which is to be considered for this reflex electron. That is the body, a three by four cycle. Okay, that is generally we can say that a three by four cycle means what? Transit time of the electron here that will be move. Okay, that will be pass through the cavity. Okay, at this particular point, then it will reach to the repeller, and then it will come back to the cavity again. Okay. And so that they will release their energy. That is nothing. Means bunches forms are there, and they will release their. Energy. So that is nothing but a a transit time of this uh, repeller there. Okay, the 
transit time. Generally, we say it's supposed to be a transit time. Here. And that transit time is a 3 by 4 cycle, first mode, or 1 by 1 of 3 by 4 circle, or 2 of 3 by 4 cycle, or 3 of a 3 by 4, by 4 cycle. So this one is about a, a reflex list one here. Yeah? So in this case, if you see here, okay, in the case of a reflex list, if you see that we have the cathode, okay, it is about a negative DCB voltage, which is supposed to be considered here, higher voltage, it emits the electron, then these are the anodes used. These are these anodes are used to focus the electron beam in the given direction in the axis direction. Because generally what happens? Electron emits from the cathode, they will be spread anywhere there. So we need to focus those electrons in this given axis, this axis there. So that's why we need to consider a focusing anode here. So electrons are focused here. And then electrons are passing through the grid voltage here. Okay. So they will be accelerated or decelerated. Means what? Here a velocity modulation takes place because of that a cavity gap voltage. This one is about a cavity gap voltage. And there electrons are accelerated by this accelerated field. And the electrons are accelerated as well as decelerated. And when that electrons are accelerated or decelerated there because of that cavity gap voltage, they will reach to the repeller space there. So this one is there nothing but the repeller space. From this uh, cavity, okay, output part of the cavity, this from this to this is nothing but a the space that is about a, a repeller space. They will enter to the repeller space. The electron those here are accelerating, they enter in the repeller space with a higher velocity. So that's why they will reach toward the repeller there. The electrons are entered. Okay, the electrons are entered at a negative half cycle of the cavity grid voltage. They are decelerated, their velocity reduced there. And the electrons are enter with a zero okay zero what you can say that zero value of the grid voltage okay that positive cycle of the cycle so they their velocity will be unchanged there. okay so that's why at some particular repeller voltage we need to tune the repeller voltage in such a way that they'll form the bunches there and all at the particular point so they will form the bunches at one particular cycle that is about a 3 by 4 cycle or one of 3 by 4 cycle or two of 3 by 4 cycle they will form the bunches okay at this particular cycle and then then they will release their energy and that is nothing but what bunches return from these bunches occur because of that electrons are repelled by this repeller and then they will form the bunches at this particular a cavity input here. Okay, at this electrons are formed the bunches at this particular cavity gap. There. Okay, this one opening of the cavity. And then you can say that then that bunches will give up their energy. Okay, the bunches will give up their energy to the the field. Okay, to the a field there. And then will get the oscillated output and that oscillated output will be collected okay this one here we have the output here rf output there and here we can say that oscillated output will be taken out to this a probe here that is about a coaxial probe or a coupling probe that is used to collect or that is used to take output from this a cavity there so this and then once that energy is released by this bunches then all the electrons are collect collected by the walls of the cavity or any other ground metal that is to be used to collect the electron and then they will give up there then they will be collected at the end here. electrons give up the energy to the cavity and they then that is kinetic energy they will give the kinetic energy to the field that is the electromagnetic field and they will be collected at this walls of the uh, cavity or there will be some ground metals to be used to collect the electrons there. So that's all about a reflex list on here. So in a reflex list on, if you see that 
only a single cavity is used. In a two cavity cliston, there are two cavities used. In a multiple cavity cliston, multiple cavities are used here. Okay. That is about a reflex cliston there. And then we need to find out what will be the spacing that is about the grid spacing that's about the T. What will be the transit time? Required transit time is depending upon that the 3 by 4 cycle or one of 3 by 4 cycle. Okay, it, whichever the cycle operation and that cycle operation that is depending upon that a repeller voltage. We need to tune a repeller voltage in such a way that we'll get at each cycle operation, 3 by 4 cycle operation or one of 3 by 4 cycle operation will get the kinetic energy to this particular cavity. Why this mean? Means what? Here, acceleration and deceleration of the electron takes place and at this particular cycle, that 3 by 4 cycle, they will produce their energy at a positive half cycle of a 3 voltage. We need to adjust, we need to adjust the repeller voltage so that repeller repel the electron and they will give up their energy at the positive half cycle of the grid voltage. Okay, so that's why we need to get the, see that at what value of the repeller voltage they will give up the energy at a positive half cycle of a grid voltage there. If supposed to be, repeller is not adjusted, that electron will give up their energy at the negative half cycle. So there is no use of that particular negative half cycle. Then unnecessarily heat will be created at across the cavity there, across this, uh, in a reflex system. And then your reflex response get heated. So instead of that, if supposed to be considered that, adjust the repeller voltage. So at a positive half cycle, then they will give up the energy and will get the oscillated output. At only the 3 by 4 cycle, will get the oscillated output. Or at 1 of 3 by 4 cycle, will get the oscillated output. And within that particular period, from this to this, will not get a oscillated output of the reflex response. So we need to tune the reflex list on based on the repeller voltage at each cycle so that we will get the oscillated output. So that's all about the reflex list. So thank you all of you.